Hi, fifth graders. We're going to be reading some more out of the invention of Hugo Cabre today, starting on chapter six called Ashes. The next day at the crack of dawn, the old man was opening his toy booth when Hugo approached. I thought I might see you today, the old man said as he turned toward Hugo. He reached into his pocket and removed a tied up handkerchief and held it out. Hugo's eyes widened, hopefully, but as soon as he took the handkerchief, he understood what he had been given. His breath caught in his throat and tears began to form in his eyes as he untied the knot. No wonder the chapter was called Ashes. Hugo touched the ashes and then let them fall to the floor with the, with the handkerchief. He staggered backward. All of his plans, all of his dreams disappeared in that scattered pile of ash. Hugo charged at the old man, but the old man was quick and caught his arms. What is your attachment to this notebook? He demanded as he shook Hugo. Why won't you tell me? Hugo was sobbing. He tried to release himself from the old man. As he tried to release himself from the old man, he noticed something strange. The old man seemed to have tears in his eyes too. Why would the, why in the world would he be crying? Go away, the old man whispered, letting go of Hugo. Please, just go away. It's over. Hugo wiped his eyes with his dirty, ashen hands, leaving long black smudges across his face. He turned around and ran off as fast as he could. Hugo was exhausted, but it was time to check the clocks again. For a moment, he considered giving himself up. He'd never get the message from the automaton now, so he might as well turn himself into the station inspector and be sent to the orphanage. At least there he wouldn't have to steal food or worry about the clocks breaking down. But the thought of losing the mechanical man was too much to bear. He had grown to love it. He felt responsible for it, even if it didn't work. At least it, at the train station, he had it nearby. Hugo set to work on the clocks, but no matter how he tried to distract himself, he kept seeing the handkerchief filled with ashes. He was angry with the old man, and he would never forgive the girl for lying to him. At the end of the day, Hugo put down his bucket of tools and sat next to the clock he had been checking. He placed the railroad watch in the bucket, pulled his knees to his up to his chin and his head to and held his head in his hands. The steady rhythm of the clock lulled Hugo to sleep, but the dream but he dreamed of fire and woke with a start. Frustrated and sad and finished with the clocks, he finally returned to his room and tried to sleep, but his mind wouldn't stop spinning. And so he reached for a scrap of paper and a pencil from one of the boxes near his bed. He sat down on the floor and drew pictures of clocks and gears, imaginary machines and, and magicians on stage. He drew an autom the automaton over and over and over again. He kept drawing until his mind calmed down. Then he slipped the drawings underneath his bed onto the big pile of other drawings he had done and climbed into, climbed fully dressed into bed. So here he is in that little apartment in the train station. Morning came and the clocks were waiting, as always. He, after Hugo finished his rounds, he washed his face and hands in the basin. He was thirsty and longed for a hot cup of coffee. It was impossible to steal coffee since someone had to pour it, so he searched through his jars and came up with a few coins. Hugo brought him, bought himself the coffee and sat for a moment at one of the empty cafe tables. He preferred to pay for what he could with the coins he that he found each week, and he tried to steal, tried not to steal anything he thought people needed. <clears throat> if I'm thinking about Hugo as a character, that tells me a lot, right? That he, sadly, in his situation, he does have to steal. It doesn't mean that that makes him a bad person. It's just that that's his situation right now. But the fact that he reveals that he hates stealing and he, when he does steal, he steals things that he thinks people don't need. He pays for what he can with the money he finds. Um, he took clothes from the lost and found and scavenged the garbage for day old bread. 
Sometimes he allowed himself to steal fresh bottles of milk or pastries when they were left outside the cafe early in the morning, as his uncle had showed him. The toys, of course, had been an obvious exception to the rule. The coffee was hot and Hugo let it cool. He looked around the cavernous station at the people rushing by without, uh, with a thousand different places to go. When he saw them from above, he always thought the travelers looked like cogs in an intricate swirling machine. But up close, amid the bustle and the stampede, everything just seemed noisy and disconnected. When Hugo picked up his coffee again, he noticed that a folded up piece of paper appeared on the table. He looked around, but there was no one near enough to have left it. Slowly, he unfolded the paper. It read, meet me in the booksellers on the other side of the train station. That was all. But then Hugo turned the paper over. There was one more sentence. Your notebook wasn't burned. All right, and this chapter is called Secrets. Hugo had never been inside the bookstore before, but of course he knew exactly where it was. He knew every inch of the train station. Opposite the cafe, not far from the main waiting room, there were two wooden tables covered in books flanking a door that read, Our Lavasse Bookseller New and Used. A little bell jangled as Hugo stepped inside the store. He was rubbing the buttons on his jacket and one came off in his hand. He slipped it into his pocket where he continued to rub it. His heart was pounding. The smell, it, the place smelled of old paper, dust, and cinnamon. It reminded him of school and a brief flash of his old life pleasantly filled his memory. His best friend, Anton and Louis and Louis, uh, both had black hair and liked to pretend they were brothers. Hugo hadn't thought about them in a while. The taller of the two boys, Anton, uh, used to call Hugo Tic Tac because he always had clockworks in his pockets. Hugo wondered about them. Did they still pretend they were brothers? Did they miss him? Hugo also remembered that sometimes at night, father would read to him from ama Amazing Adventure Stories by Jules Verne and a collection of Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales, which were Hugo's favorites. He missed being read to. A clerk sat at the desk between two tall piles of encyclopedias. Hugo looked around. At first, he didn't see anyone else in the shop, but then, like a mermaid rising from an ocean of paper, the girl emerged across the room. She closed the book she had been reading and motioned for Hugo to come over. So there she is. Papa George still has your notebook. How do I know you're not lying? You lied before. So this is a really good part where you'll want to follow along because every time there's a new line, it's a different character talking. So we have a conversation back and forth between Hugo and this girl. Um, so we're trying to keep, it'll help you to keep track of who's talking. So Hugo says, um, how do I know you're not lying? I didn't lie. He's tricking you. Why are you telling me this? Why do you want to help me? The girl thought for a moment. I want to see what's in your notebook. You can't, that's a secret, said Hugo. Good, I like secrets. Hugo thought she was a very strange girl. She called to the clerk sitting at the back of the store. Monsieur Labasse, I'm taking the book on photography. I'll bring it back soon. Yes, yes, fine, fine, he said distractedly as she left the bookshop without looking at Hugo. Part of Hugo did not believe the girl. Maybe she was playing a trick on him. But since he had nothing to lose, he marched over to the toy booth and waited until the old man was finished with his customers. The cogs and gears in his head were spinning out of control. What are you doing here? The old, uh, what are you doing here? The old man asked the old man. Hugo took a deep breath. I don't believe you burned my notebook. You don't? The old man seemed surprised. He thought about it for a few moments and said, well, I don't really care. Maybe you're right. Maybe those were the ashes. Maybe those were not the ashes of your notebook, but you won't ever find out, will you? Hugo inched closer to the booth. The old man calmly straightened the toys on the counter and said to the boy, you should not have returned here, Hugo Cabray. Now go away. Hugo did, but later, alone in his room, 
And while he, he scurried through the walls, fixing the clocks, Hugo thought about the automaton. He convinced himself he had to try, keep trying. He returned to the toy booth the next day and the day after that. At night, new drawings accumulated beneath his bed. Finally, on the third day, the old man came out, came at him with a broomstick. Hugo flinched, thinking the old man was going to hit him. But instead, he raised the handle toward Hugo and said, be useful. Hugo took the broom and began to sweep the floor around the booth. The old man watched carefully. When Hugo finished sweeping, he handed the broom to the old man. Now give me my notebook. The old man coughed and reached into his pocket. He pulled out some change. Go buy me a croissant and a coffee, unless you're going to steal my coins too. Hugo happily grabbed the change and returned quickly with two croissants and two coffees. They ate and drank in silence. When they finished, the old man got up from the bench they were sitting on, went behind the counter and found the remains of the little blue wind up mouse that Hugo had stepped on when he was caught stealing from the booth. The old man laid the crushed pieces on the counter and said, fix it. Hugo just stared at the old man. I said, fix it, he repeated. I need my tools, Hugo said. The old man took out a small canister of tiny screwdrivers, pliers, files, and brass hammers. Use these. Hugo hesitated a moment, but then he set to work. The mouse skittered noisily across the counter. So I was right about you said the old man. You've got some talent. Now will you tell me why you came to me? Will you tell me about the drawings in your notebook? Give it to me first, said the boy. The old man exhaled. If I didn't burn your notebook, there's no, there's only one way I would even consider giving it back to you. Children like you are not worth the rags you wear, but most children like you wouldn't have disappeared completely would have disappeared completely after being caught. And most children like you aren't so good with mechanical things. Maybe you will prove that there is more to you than being a thief. Perhaps you can earn back your notebook. But remember, you are gambling with your time because you might work for me for months and months only to find out that you were wrong about the notebook. There's a chance it's already gone. That's the risk you'll have to take. You'll come to the toy booth every day I will decide how long you will work for each of the items you stole, and it will be up to me to decide when you have earned back your notebook, if it still exists. Do you understand? I already have a job, Hugo said. The old man laughed. <laughs> Thief is not a job title, boy. I have another job, but I'll come here when I can. You begin tomorrow said the old man, and Hugo ran off down the empty hallway, careful not to click his shoe heels on the stone floor. This wasn't the perfect plan for Hugo, but at least it was a start. All right, that is the end of that chapter, so we will stop there. Thanks for listening today.